Glad to have you back. And now to our coverage of the abduction of the Zamfara school girls. A latest report says the military and the police are intensifying the search for 317 pupils of government girls science secondary school Jenga Bay. The Jenga Bay attack has come in barely two weeks after scores of children were abducted by bandits from government science college Kagara in Niger State. The chief press secretary to the governor, Jamilu Iliasu, says the military and the police are still combing the forest in search of the victims so as to rescue them from the bandits. He, however, refuted a report that had gone viral yesterday that the victims had been released. Meanwhile, Pope Francis has decried the kidnapping of the students from their boarding school in northwest Nigeria and prayed for the girls' quick release. Addressing the public in St. Peter's Square, Francis said he was adding his voice to others, including Nigeria's bishops, in condemning what he described as the vile abduction of the girls. I joined the bishops of Nigeria in condemning the vile abduction of 317 girls taken from their school in Janjebe in the northwestern part of the country. We pray so that these girls may return home soon. I am close to their families and to them as well. Uh, we have uh, our then, on the line. Let's go to Gusol, the capital yeah. of Zamfara State, where a rice correspondent, as you've heard, wow. Awal Ibrahim joins us now. Awal, great to have you on News Day today. Um, we're just discussing in the studio, and like Indy pointed out, over the weekend there were conflicting reports of the release of the Jenga Bay uh, abducted girls. Can you tell us what exactly happened? How did we get to hear they were released and then there was a, 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 a counter report to say, no, that's fake news. What exactly is happening? And what is the latest on, on the uh, uh, rescue mission? Do we know anything, anything new? Well, the latest about the rescue mission is still this morning. The Nigerian police has dispatched another team of search and rescue again. Last night, they also distributed phone numbers to the general public that in case they saw movement of those students, they should alert through those numbers. But relating to the release, actually, it was a complete rumor. It wasn't true because we've checked. They said the girls initially were released and have been taken to Anka, to the Emir's Palace, where subsequently they will be brought down to go to the government house, we checked it wasn't true. Almost on two several locations, I've been visiting Anka, but it wasn't true. And also here in Guso, as at last night, there was no news of the whereabouts of those girls. And up to this morning, also the security operatives are still searching. All right, Awal. Uh, I know that uh, the state government immediately came out uh, with a rebuttal concerning. Uh, the rescue of the girls, what are their fathers saying or what have their fathers said about both the rescue and that rebuttal? All they are saying is that they are negotiating. We were thinking maybe by this morning they would just announce that the girls have been released because what the State Commissioner for Security was saying is that negotiation is ongoing with the bandits, but they are not giving out details as in where and who and who are discussing, but we knew that some of the repentant bandits are involved or part of the negotiation team. So, but the irony here is, while the state government is saying negotiation is ongoing, here we have the police, you know, giving out phone numbers to the general public in case they saw movement of the students, they should alert, and also dispatching more numbers of security personnel into the Zamfara forest to search for these students. Yes, I, I, well, I was going to say there seems to be a sense of a divided front. Um, we hear of Governor Matawale saying that um, we will be shocked, the public will be shocked as to who is behind the kidnapping. We also hear of the uh, Northern Elder saying, commending him, saying he's doing his best, but someone is doing their worst. You know, is there a sense in which you're gaining access to some of this, do you say, subterranean uh, narrative going on? Do, do you have any sense as to where this is all coming from? Well, not as of now, but actually, you know, the Zamfara state government 
said, it's still in dialogue with this. And recently, we've seen we are numbers of them are surrendering their tests and arms to the government. And uh, then we now saw a situation whereby hundreds of students have now been abducted again, still within Zamfara State. And one other thing is where the school is located. Government Guest Country School, Jengebe, it, it was established five years ago as a junior secondary school that was later on converted into a building. In the highest class is SS2. They are yet to start writing their final year examination. The school is just at the entrance of the Jengebe community. It has some private residents as its neighbors. And also, a few meters away from the school gate, there is a station for the combined patrol team, making up the Nigerian Army, the police, and the Civil Defense Corps. Hmm. Well, our gangs are notorious with kidnapping for ransom, but is there any clarity behind the motives uh, of these repeated attacks on schools in the Northwest region? Well, one, one cannot see for now. They will be having different motives because we've seen that of Katsuna, whereby we are told just a single person, you know, championed everything. But that of Zamfara, we don't know. Will it be having any other link like that of Katsuna, whereby it was after the release and subsequently events started unfolding, but we know the bandits operating within Zamfara State are responsible for the kidnaps because the locals say actually they saw them, they had it when it was happening, but there was nothing they can do. According to the neighboring communities there, that these bandits split themselves into two. One other group was engaging the, the security post, which is closer to the school, at the entrance of the community, whereby others were easy, you know, taking the students away. So for one to say this is the reason, we may not know for now, apart from perhaps that of monetary. All right, oh, well, um, one of the girls in the Kagara kidnap who was released said that she wouldn't want to go back to school unless the government makes it safe, then she will want to go back to school. What feelers are you guessing from the community where the school is located in Zamfara State? What feelers, if any, are you getting from the parents about their abducted girls? The opinion from the parents in Gen -E is that unless and until the situation improves, does the security situation improve or else do not allow their daughters to go back to school after their release. In an interview with majority, this was their undue because they said not only Jengi and not only government country school Jengi, but the whole school is not safe. And actually, the moment you enter Zamfara, that is just a feeling. From the south, if you said you are going to Jengi, you know, the, the local parlance, they say it is as if you are going to Iraq. It's a war zone. Speaking of war zones, Awal, ah, well, very briefly, can you give us a sense of how, how much affection you're getting from the people there? Because we were told that the media were being chased away on the back of um, Shigumi's uh, proclamations that the media were similarly criminal. Uh, we, we can't take that because of our time. Okay. All right, Awal, ah, we'll leave it there for now. Thank you so much for bringing us up to speed. You're welcome.